Synthetic Aperture Radar or SAR has become an effective Earth observation technology used globally for various applications. EGEOS offers the best combination of SAR data from the two systems Cosmo SkyMed 1st and 2nd generation, and SAOCOM. Cosmo SkyMed 0.3 meters azimuth resolution 0.5 meters ground range resolution over 20 to 60 degrees incidence angles best radiometric quality dual polarization for all imaging modes quad pole mode unique di2s mode for acquisition of two images at once saucom interferometric revisit eight days full polarization matrix available for all imaging modes L-band SAR can penetrate vegetation cover and terrain, for better agriculture and forestry applications. The combination of the two systems, Cosmo SkyMed 2nd generation and SAOCOM. The CAS system is made up of the Cosmo SkyMed satellites and the SAOCOM satellites. Orbital planes will be very close in order to guarantee 12 hours revisit, acquire X plus L-band within a short time frame, do not impact on use of ground antennas. Combined Cosmo SkyMed 2nd generation and SAOCOM can increase the performances and widen the fields of application. This is greatly improved by the availability of synchronized acquisitions. Welcome to a free webinar on EGOs and the new frontiers of radar-based applications. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and hello to everyone here. Thank you for joining us from whichever part of the world you're in for this webinar titled EGEOS and the New Frontiers of Radar-Based Applications, organized by EGEOS, hosted by Geospatial Media in collaboration with Veng, and moderated by us, the Sisters of SAR. We're here today to learn about Cosmos SkyMed second generation, the best SAR constellation on the market, integrated with SAOCOM in a unique combination of SAR systems. This is a webinar dedicated to the SAR capabilities that EGEOS can deploy using Cosmos SkyMed second generation. Hereafter, let's just call it CSG, and a combination of Cosmos SkyMed second generation, CSG, and SAOCOM, the Argentinian SAR constellation. EGEOS is a leading international player in the Earth observation and geospatial information business, and is the exclusive global distributor for the Cosmos SkyMed data. Hola. I hand it over to you. Thank you. SAOCOM is a constellation composed of two identical satellites, SAOCOM 1A and 1B, and Cosmos SkyMed first and second generation is a constellation of small satellites for the Mediterranean Basin Observation, um, also called COSMO. The Cosmos SkyMed second generation CSG constellation is two satellites meant to replace the first generation. Both these satellite constellations together form the Italian-Argentinian Satellite System for Emergency Management. This is a joint project between the Argentine National Space Activities Commission and the Italian Space Agency. So, let us begin. Gopika? Thank you, Ola. My name is Dr. Gopika Suresh, and I'm one of the co-organizers of the Sisters of the SAR group, along with Ola, and two others who we'll introduce in a bit. We're an outreach and capacity building initiative. There's Laura, that's the third co-organizer of us. So the Sisters of SAR, we are an outreach and capacity building initiative aimed at promoting women scientists and their research in the field of SAR remote sensing. You'll find us under Twitter, under the handle at Sisters of SAR. So please follow us if you haven't already. We at Sisters of SAR aim to share the exceptional advancements in SAR research and engineering around the world while showcasing amazing women in SAR and promoting the accomplishments of women in STEM. Sisters of SAR is managed by four of us, presently you see three. Dr. Laura Dingle Robertson is a physical research scientist at Agriculture and Agri-Foods Canada, whose research focuses on mapping and monitoring agricultural lands in Canada and around the world using SAR data. We have with us also Sarah Banks, who's a physical research scientist at Environment and Climate Change Canada, whose research focuses on mapping and monitoring changes in wetlands using SAR. She's also starting her PhD at Carleton University this September. 
Myself, I'm Gopika Suresh. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the Earth Observatory of Singapore, where my research focuses on developing methods for coastline monitoring from SAR data. And I'm Orla Sheridan. I'm a current postgrad student in Geographic Information Systems and Remote Sensing at Maynooth University in Ireland. I currently use SAR data to monitor flood inundation on the island of Fasanchar in the Bay of Bengal, where recently Rohingya refugees have been relocated. So we officially launched our Twitter page on April 27th last year. So we're uh, on our one year anniversary this week, and we have almost 4,000 followers from across the world. We follow a weekly schedule with a SAR Fact on Monday, SAR Training Tuesday, Diversity Days on Wednesday, uh, Picture Days on Thursday, and on our Fridays, we celebrate a SAR star, which highlights a woman in SAR and looks at her research. Each of these daily themes aim to highlight every aspect of SAR from the SAR data we can access to the scientists who are working with it. Moving forward, we are also collaborating with SAR Capacity Building Initiative, which aims to bring SAR experts to the world through online webinars on a bi-monthly basis. We will also continue to participate with groups such as Ladies of Landsat uh, in monthly online geomixers, which are networking events intended to bring members of the broad remote, remote sensing community together. We thank EGOs for having us as moderators for this webinar. And I would like to invite Dr. Francesco Longo to say a few words and formally open this webinar. Dr. Longo is the head of the Earth Observation Unit at the Italian Space Agency. He started his professional career at the Italian Space Agency in 2006 and has been in charge of the program office set up for the EO National Missions and for the SAR Cosmos SkyMet second generation constellation since 2015. Francesco, over to you now. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for me, it's, very, it's an honor to, to in, introduce this, this event. Uh, Earth observation is uh, the most important space sector for our country, representing uh, an irreplaceable resource capable of contributing to achieve multiple strategic, political, and socioeconomic objectives. In this context, uh, uh, the international space cooperation in Earth observation is the most powerful device available for countries to bring benefits and to overcome together the cost and the complexities involved in a space program. It's for these reasons that my agency started more than 15 years ago a cooperation with CONAE, uh, with the uh, Argentinian Space Agency, in the Earth observation field that was focused on the joint development of SIASGE system of systems. SIASGE is a space-based network aimed uh, at enforcing disaster management composed by the Italian Cosmos Climate Constellation and Argentinian SICOM. Uh, currently, it's composed by four satellites of uh, Cosmos Climate the first generation, plus the first of the second one, and uh, uh, the two satellites uh, of uh, SICOM Constellation. This configuration of integrated and interoperable system and its characteristic allows to monitor the Earth using XL, but also simultaneous X plus L bands in all weather condition, because it's, a, it's an active uh, system, uh, by day and night uh, with high revisit time, uh, an effective tool to increase the knowledge and understanding of uh, the critical phenomena occurring on our planet and investigate different type of events like inundations, uh, landslides, floods, fire, and many others. The, the performances of Cosmos Climate and uh, SAOCOM uh, 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 are augmented considering the, the capacity of L-band that can penetrate the vegetation the soil, collecting information for risk maps, uh, soil moisture, and interferometric products. In this context, uh, the agreement between the IGEOS and VANG is therefore one of the natural declinations of the largest space cooperation between Italy and Argentina in commercial and space commercial industrial sector and also in research and university in science and applications. 
uh, my agency started uh, recently a new initiative about uh, the, the new methodologies that implement the, both the X and L capabilities in order to promote research and development of methods, uh, algorithm, preoperative projects on uh, X and L uh, uh, synthetic aperture radar uh, bands. Uh, we have uh, on, on, the, on the floor now 10 proposals, uh, very interesting, uh, that we, we start and uh, we present uh, soon on agriculture and food security, uh, natural hazards, uh, sea and coastal uh, area, cryosphere, and uh, artificial intelligence. I believe that by participating uh, in this webinar, you are in the right place uh, and the right time to understand the full capabilities uh, of our SAR system or systems in XL band on the same orbit. I wish you all a very successful webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Longo. And I think I can speak for everyone when I say I'm really excited to hear about the individual mis missions and the endless possibilities uh, of those X and L band combinations. And you're totally right, Francesco. This is the right place to be to learn all about these missions. So without further ado, let me hand over to Richard Shigalis, who's a senior principal space systems engineer and operations advisor at MITRE for a short introduction. Richard is an ex-US Navy pilot. He graduated in 2007 with a master's in applied physics and was assigned to the 6th Fleet Headquarters in Naples as the US Navy's first fleet space operations officer. He has worked with commercial SAR and Earth observation satellite data for maritime applications and surveillance during his years in Italy. After retiring from the Navy in 2015, he is currently the Senior Principal Space Systems Engineer and Operations Advisor to MITRE Corporation. Richard, the floor is now yours. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's really nice to be here. I really appreciate the invitation. and. Uh, uh, it's it's wonderful to be part of uh, such a such an interested group of of SAR enthusiasts. Um, I do have some slides, and I, and I'd like to just pitch those over here and see if I can uh, see if we can do this easily. Can you verify if you're seeing my slides? Hello. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, well, I, again, um, hello, everyone. Uh, you know, in, in being asked to do this, I'm, I'm very interested in, in kind of uh, discussing some of the, the backdrop to the interests in SAR. Clearly, um, you know, what, what is new and different in the environment resulting in this increased visibility and this increased interest globally uh, for for more SAR data, um, what is behind this uh, this dawning of SAR? Uh, clearly, for the last fifteen years or so, electro optical cameras uh, on orbit have uh, have really kind of reached a uh, uh, a prime of, of 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 availability, and people are using that data. And now people are really starting to understand the true power of SAR and, and, and why it uh, can be so critical, especially in, in today's application. So I wanted to just kind of highlight a, a few things just to kind of gauge uh, and, and set a little bit of a, a, a leveling of the stage here. You know, one thing that's, that's, that's really gone on in the environment is the, the dawning of analytics. And analytics as compared to analysis, what we've found is, is um, for years, imagery lived in the world of analysis, where an analyst had to look at imagery and establish its quality. What's going on now is, is this world of analytics where computers can drive, they can, they can cull across this imagery data and pull out all sorts of observables. These observables can then be quantitatively measured and combined with other phenomenologies uh, so that a picture can be created from multiple, essentially frequencies across uh, across the spectrum of of um, uh, of sensing. Resolution for the longest time has been the king of analysis. We've seen this in panchromatic uh, EO, but in the world of analytics, 
We've seen these tools developing, match filtering, mask filtering, spatial and sp spectral detections. And this dawning of AI ML analytics is creating these new requirements. And what's so nice about SAR is it has this ability to, to, to really um, shine a light on a problem and draw observables out. You can force the observables out of the environment. And, be, and, and if it has enough metadata in the SAR, you can, uh, you can make measurements across the, the, uh, the data and use that in a very quantitative manner instead of so qualitative. So what we're finding is that SAR is becoming this backbone for wide-scale analytics. Um, analytics that can be run across a large image uh, provided it has that metadata. And that metadata, um, we need to think about uh, polarization in SAR is almost like multispectral and hyperspectral in EO. Without the ability to have diversity across polarization, uh, SAR becomes much more like uh, panchromatic imagery, and it's it's only a surrogate for uh, uh, for imagery on a cloudy day. But what we also need to r remember is that there are there are orthogonal um, remote sensing priorities uh, in in our sensors. Resolution clearly is orthogonal to field of view. The more you zoom in, the less area you see, but the more you may see it at a higher resolution. Spectral diversity is also kind of orthogonal to these things. And so it's, it's important to recognize that what we're doing is we're looking in a trade space of these, of these different uh, trades in order to get the most out of, uh, out of the, uh, the capabilities. So, um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the significance of, of this SAR uh, world and, and what it's doing is is providing this this new level of awareness in a completely different level of the spectrum where if we think of the EO satellites operating in the visible spectrum, we can think of the SAR as operating in a completely different part of the spectrum. And um, and what we're doing is is if we build things appropriately with the right architecture, we can combine uh, wide field of view of SAR with high resolution of SAR, with high resolution of EO, with signals in the environment. And we can bring all these things together quickly in order to make better sense of our environment without necessarily having to uh, uh, have the data sit at rest for, for hours, days, or even weeks of analysis in order to understand what's in it. But understanding what that trade space is and, and understanding that we're dealing with essentially different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and we are leveraging the fact that we might hear something that we can't see, we might see something we can't hear, and sometimes we'll be able to see and hear something. We bring these things together and we get quick validation that that is in fact what we thought it was. And, um, uh, and what this is resulting in is this transition of space capability from a historical intelligence collection perspective to more of operations, exploitation, data to decision. Can we do something with this information in real time? And so I'm reminded when I look at things, things like uh, 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 SAR and especially robust SAR systems like, like EGEOS and, and, and SAL, Salcom, um, I'm reminded of sim more simplistic uh, examples like the human body, where we have uh, this wonderful wide field of view peripheral vision, low resolution, wide field of view peripheral vision, high resolution, narrow focused vision, and we've got our 360 degree hearing, which is like SIGINT, and we're able to orchestrate these senses. Uh, in our human body all the time. We do it all day long without even thinking about it. And because the data is filling into our brain and it's being fused all together uh, and we're building uh, um, uh, recognition patterns and filtered sets um, and we're coordinated with our human body, we can drive this information to decision, this multi-phenomenology information, everything matches up, it tells me what it is, I see a bird flying, I, I hear the bird chirping, 
Um, I, I, I know it's a bird, and sometimes a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush, right? Um, but bottom line is, is what we see is this, is this almost a transition where we're no longer thinking about one sensor and its TC pad, its tasking, collection, processing, exploitation. But what instead we see is this ability to transition between phenomenologies, tipping and cueing, where, where signals in the environment that we hear will be fused with wide field of view, low resolution, say SAR, uh, those two together will form a sort set and we cue then to high resolution SAR or we cue to high resolution EO. And this is actually an example of doing that where on the west, east coast of the United States, uh, a large framework of SAR is laid down over the coast of, uh, of the United States um, and uh, all the data is brought back in instantaneously through analytics. It's, it's called of its richness and that it creates a sort set to then queue to EO satellites. And, and then this data to decision is driving uh, so much of, of, of the operational mindset. But the key to the success really goes back in that trade space of those orthogonal vectors of resolution versus diversity of, of uh, essentially frequency diversity or spectral diversity. You know, again, in EO, that might be HSI, that might be hyperspectral or multispectral. Um, in SAR, it's, it's polarization and having the ability to, to, to uh, have different channels of polarization so that you can pull data out. And then, and then finally, it's that field of view. It's that ability to, to manage that trade space between these vectors and look for that optimized point to go after the observables in the environment that you're looking at. But the key, the underpinning to, uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the drive and the appetite for SAR is this, this, this rich environment, this rich data set that has all of this um, uh, metadata that can be that you can force observables out of the environment makes it ideally suited for analytics. Multipolarization SARS, especially with wider and wider fields of views, offer diversity to enable these analytics much beyond the spatial analytics that uh, we're used to using in, say, like pan pan chromatic imagery analysis. Um, but the the SAR has this ability to really bring out the observables in the environment. And the wide area remote sensing and polarization diversity of the larger SARS is especially appealing for the requirements of wide scale analytics. It's wonderful to be able to take a sensor and image a large swath of, 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 of area so that analytics can be run at larger and larger scales. It's not enough to just have a soda straw and point it at one spot on the ground and, and, and know everything that's going on in that little soda straw because so much could be happening just outside that soda straw's area of coverage. Um, the last thing is the ability to, to look. And I, and I love the fact that, that this particular initiative has, you know, is, is not only combining uh, SAR and multi-channel polarization, but multiple kinds of SARs, X-band and uh, L-band, um, uh, so that um, you know, so that there's different phenomenologies that can be brought to bear um, with constant revisit and the ability to point a satellite at any spot on the ground on any given day constitutes the ability to look. Uh, and once we can figure out that we can look on demand anywhere in the globe, we can figure out later on what we can see. So remember, when going back to that human body, it's so important to be able to look first and then figure out what you can see. What you can see is in that trade space and that can be defined based upon the problem set. But that ability to look is something that uh, is new and different and that's driving this, this, this pursuit for pushing uh, satellite remote sensing from that intelligence collection mindset to that more operational, how do I push data to decision? Uh, how do I get this data in time to influence operations? Whatever that operations is. It could be uh, first responders, it could be, uh, it can be any number of things. It could be maritime monitoring, but operations could be as simple as queuing another satellite 
or cueing someone to actually go take a look on the ground. And so I, I, I just give these, these thoughts uh, as kind of a scene setter. And again, it's, it's, it's a real privilege to be here. I thank you for that opportunity. And I will hand the, uh, uh, the platform back over to you. Thank you, Richard. I agree that multipolarization SA offers so much information and makes SA so much more diverse. And we at Sisters of SA, we like things that are diverse and representative, don't we, Ola? Absolutely. Thanks for that, Richard. Uh, I'll just also say at this point, if anybody has any comments they want to make, they can just pop them or questions, they can pop them in the comment box. So right now I invite Axel Odone, the head of Cosmos SkyMed and Satellite Data at EPIOS, to tell us more about Cosmos SkyMed's second generation system. Axel has been in remote sensing or in the remote sensing business since 1991, first with Eurimage and since 2011 in EPIOS. He currently is head of Cosmos SkyMed and Satellite Data Unit that provides access to satellite data for internal projects and for global customers. He is one of the members of the Italian space agency EGEOS Joint Commission that is managing the Cosmos SkyMed first and second generation commercialization. So Axel, Cosmos SkyMed second generation is now fully available for the users. Could you tell us a little bit more about the upgrades from the first generation? Well, thank you and uh, good afternoon to everybody. I try to show you my presentation okay i hope that you can see it so i'm going to talk about the cosmos camera second generation system which is part of the cosmos camera constellation which we believe uh, strongly believe is probably the most advanced the star satellites on the market uh, providing unique imaging capabilities so the system as you know it's owned by the italian space agency the minister of defense uh, and has been developed by the Italian industry. IGEOS is an exclusive worldwide reseller on a global scale. Currently, the constellation of Cosmos Camera is composed by four satellites of the first generation and one satellite of the second generation. And they are all in the same orbit in order to guarantee the 12 hour revisit and a frequent interferometric revisit. And of course, being Cosmos Camera available since 2008, we have a huge archive of data. Coming to the second generation, the first satellite has been launched in uh, the end of December uh, 2019 and it's now fully operational and available for the users. The second satellite is going to be launched by the end of this year and there is uh, already construction going on for the third and fourth missions of the second generation. Of course, we learned a lot from uh, the 10 years experience with Cosmos SkyMed, so the new system has a lot of improvement not only in terms of resolution, but as we already said, the multipolarization option, geolocation accuracy, agility of the platform. So there is a, every aspect of the system has been improved in the last uh, years in order to generate a new system. By looking at the available imaging modes, this is the Spotlight 2A mode, which is the highest resolution of the Cosmos kind of second generation system for civilian use. And it's a 0.3 meter resolution, which is 0.5 in range and ground uh, range direction. And is available with single or dual polarization. This is very important. All the sensor modes of Cosmos Second Generation have the option between single or dual polarization. And as you can see by this beautiful image of the Great Pyramid of Giza, it is a color image because we combine the, the polarization, in this case HH and HB, to generate a color composite, which is helping of course, to read the image. We have an additional mode, which is the Spotlight 2B, which is 6 meter, 0.6 meter resolution over a large size, a 10 by 10 kilometer size. Also here we have a single double polarization. And what is important to say also, over the large incidence range of 20 to 60 degrees. Then we have the Spotlight 2C mode, which is still a submetric at 0.8 meter resolution. It's a smaller size, but it's a low con energy consumption mode, which allows to take several acquisitions in a short time frame. Then we have the strip map board, which is our main mode, which we use for a lot of applications, as you will see later on, which has a 3 meter resolution on a 40 kilometers watt size. Very interesting, because we have also a quad pole mode, which is a new uh, capability for the Cosmos Camera system. At 3 meter resolution, you have all four polarization options available at full resolution. 
We have also the ping pong mode, which is an alternating polarization, which has a lower resolution on a 40 kilometers watt. And then we have the two imaging modes, which are used for the large area monitoring, especially in the maritime domain, which is the Scanser 1, which has a resolution of 20 by 4 meters over 100 kilometers watt, a very large area size. Or we have a Scanser 2, which is a 40 meter resolution over uh, 40 by 6 meter resolution over 200 kilometers watt. Again, singular dual polarization, and as you can see here, we have a combination of two polarizations where we were able to have a, a blue sea as a, the human eye would expect it to be. Then we have a, a new imaging mode, which is called D2IS, which is absolutely unique for Cosmos second generation. No other star satellite is able to acquire two images at the same moment. As you can see in this picture, this is a real uh, acquisition that has been made by the satellite. There are two acquisitions, one over Seoul and another one in the countryside in South Korea, which are taken at the exact same moment, at the same azimuth of the satellite. This is something which is unique for the SAR system. Actually, all the SAR system can only acquire one image at the same azimuth. So, this is an improvement and is the same parameter spotlights to be. So it's a 0.6 meter resolution imaging mode. Of course, another improvement that has been made in the Cosmos Canon second generation is the geolocation accuracy. As you can see in this table, we have different kind of geolocation accuracy. A fast one, if you want the images in near real time, immediately. After a few hours from sensing, there is a standard imaging mode, and after 16 days from the acquisition, a scientific uh, geolocation accuracy. And you can, as you can see from this table, we can have a, a spotlight mode which has standard uh, accuracy of 3.7 meter or a scientific of 1.2. But uh, as is written here, remember this is a three sigma value, it means that 99.7% of all the points are within this resolution, this accuracy. So it's a very, very precise. Uh, a accuracy that is being considered for this kind of products. Very important interferometry is one of the main uh, capabilities that the Cosmos Scanner system is able to do. And all the strip map and spotlight mode, also in Cosmos Second Generation, allow, of course, to perform interferometry between them. But also, what is very, very important is that we have proven that it is possible to make interferometry between acquisition done from the first and the second generation in the street map mode. The street map mode is a 3 meter resolution of 40 kilometers watt mode and we have a huge archive of Cosmos climate data back from 2008-2009 that covered the major cities in the world, the major sites, and so we are with Cosmos second generation we can continue this to build this stack of interferometric acquisition and allow users to make a monitoring and analysis over a very long time. This example that you can see here, there are two acquisitions of Cosmos and Cosmos Second Generation. And as you can see by the multi-temporal coherence, the blue image that you see below is a proof that the two satellites are able to be processed interferometrically together. And in the other scheme, you see the frequency of releases. So with the launch of the second second generation satellite, by the end of this year, we are going to have six interferometric acquisitions every 16 days for each beam which is a huge capability to perform interferometry. Of course, there are also several product options, the, the typical processing levels, which goes from the single look to the georeference or terrain corrected products. An additional capability in second generation is the selection of three multi-looking levels. So for instance, you can have a street map image with a one by one looking, a three meter resolution or two by two or four by four. So you can uh, select to have the highest resolution or to have the best radiometric quality by reducing the resolution. There are also availability of apodized production for spotlight modes. Important to say they're floating 32-bit image files, so the files are very big because there is a lot of information, a lot of quality in Cosmos Second Generation data. Image format, the standard image format is HDF5, but there are of course also GeoTIFF, JPEG 2000 and the Stanag format. And uh, each polarization is a separate uh, product. So when you order a dual polarization, you receive uh, two separate products. Actually, they are two complete separate products 
that then can be merged together into a single color composite, as you have seen in all these examples. So, in conclusion, uh, we believe that the second generation uh, is uh, an additional, uh, important addition uh, to the Cosmos Skylab the constellation system, and it's able to provide the best performance, the best image quality on the radar market. There is no other satellite, especially the small satellites, there are a lot of small satellites coming out, but when it goes to resolution, when it goes to image quality, radiometry, size matters. And so, big satellite that is providing unique data. We have a very high resolution, and what is important, dual pole, quad pole mode, this allows additional interpretation, additional information in all the images that you have. A unique DS2 mode, which allows to take two acquisitions at the same azimuth, possibly to make also interferometry with the first generation in street map mode, and a very high geolocation accuracy. So we are really happy about the Cosmos second generation, and we hope that all the customers will be happy also to use it and uh, and take advantages of these new technologies. Thank you. Ola, you're on mute. Pardon me. <laughs> Thanks so much for that, Axel. That was a really informative presentation and uh, reflected all the capabilities of Cosmos SkyMed second generation. Thanks so much. Indeed. And if you in the audience, you have any questions to Axel, please feel free to drop in your questions in the comments section on the right. So he can address everything in the Q&A session at the end of this uh, webinar. So now let's head over to Adrian Unger, the head of the Satellite Information Based Solution at VENG, to learn about the L-band SAR satellite constellation SALCOM. Adrian is the head of Satellite Information Based Solutions Office in charge of the global commercialization and study of new commercial applications for the Argentinian SAR constellation, SAOCOM. Adrian, over to you. Okay, thanks. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So, thanks for the introduction. I will briefly talk about SAOCOM Constellation and VENG, the company designated by the Argentinian Space Activity Commission for SAOCOM Global Distribution. So VENG has more than 12 years of experience in the aerospace industry with more than 400 employees in the different required disciplines to offer a wide range of products and services. The main ver vertical activities are access to space, satellite projects, ground segment operations, satellite information-based solutions, and industrial, industrial projects. I will spare you the details for the time being, but you will be able to clarify anything you need to know by sending an email to the addresses that I will provide you with at the end of my presentation. Maybe the most important thing to say regarding SAOCOM is that VENG does everything from operating the ground segment that gets the images to sending the products to the end users, all according to CONAE's standards of quality and professionalism. So let's talk about the main topic, SAOCOM Constellation. It's composed of two twin full polarization L-band SAR satellites that at the same time are part of the SIACE constellation, the Italian-Argentinian Satellite System for Emergency Management. Let me show you one property of L-band satellites. As you can see from the illustration that's on the right, which I have divided in three levels, SAOCOM can penetrate much more than the rest, be it through treetops or snowy soils. The radar pools manage to go through the surface and get information from deeper points, for example, for soil moisture applications. So now we can see a, a summary, a table with the sizes, polarization, the resolutions and the acquisition modes. And by combining SAOCOM 1A and B, we can achieve an eight day revisit time uh, with a best resolution of 10 meters and an angle of view between 21 and 50 degrees. And for example, in street map mode, we have some sizes of 40 kilometers times 74 kilometers, 
and for example in tops are wide single pole for example 350 kilometers times 445 kilometers so let's talk about full polarimetric functionalities so here in the very left you can see in black and white the four combinations for full polarimetric characteristics this is an image from rosario from argentina and in the right we can see a poly composition and here we can see the urban areas in white and some color combinations depending on the satellite looking in black we can see the naked soil in green vegetated areas in red high direct polarization crops and we can see the river there with some saturated signals that are metallic objects uh, or ships for example so SAOCOM images are suitable for interferometry and well here we can see some some important numbers if you are in the interferometry field we we can go on now but you can take take note about these numbers or ask, ask after the presentation for details and combining both characteristics full polarimetric characteristic and interferometry we can do some interesting applications with polinsar for example, for biomass applications or snow and ice thickness monitoring and some other interesting uses. So from Ben, products and services. Well, we, we have several products and services, but maybe the most important thing to say now is that we offer speculative programming near real time delivery, interferometric studies, and some other usual services that you may check after the presentation. We also have a classical platform, a user-friendly platform for search of the products from catalog images to future images. As usual, you may search for your region of interest, select dates, side looking orbit mode polarization and sub mode and then you you may see the the results of the search so well this is a classical platform now we can see the customer service office details so our general working conditions are the ones that you can see in the screen but perhaps it is most worth noting that we have developed a commercial tasking procedure that allows us to task new acquisitions with as little as 48 hours of time in advance. That's very important to say. And well, thank you very much. Our emails are on the screen, but you can also visit our website to learn more about the topics I have just described. And thanks for your time. Thank you, Adrian. And again, to the audience, make use of this webinar and put in your questions out there to get answers directly from Adrian. Ola, you have an affinity for the mute button, huh? Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Okay, thanks so much for that, Adrian. So now we will actually invite Luca Pietranera, Filippo Britti, and Federica Pieralice to show us the range of applications possible by combining data from these two SAR satellite constellations. Luca is the head of product development and innovation services at EGEOS in Telespazio EGEOS. He has worked for 20 years on synthetic aperture radar product development and for more than 10 years on Cosmos SkyMed high resolution SAR. He has a master's degree in telecommunications engineering and he is currently head of product development and innovation in EGEOS product development. Okay. Filippo is the head of the Radar Application Organization Unit and responsible for image intelligence product development at EGEOS. 
And wow. Federica is a SAR radar expert at EGOS, where she has been working since December 2019. She's currently part of the radar application organizational unit. Luca, Filippo, and Federica. We now know the characteristics of the two constellations, Cosmos Climate Second Generation and SAOCOM. But tell us more about their potential in terms of operational applications. How can we use these data? And nowadays, small sats are the talk of the town. Everybody wants to launch microsatellites and small satellites. So tell us what big satellites can do and why you think big is beautiful. Over to you. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, we have a small uh, selection of our uh, SAR innovation team with Federica, Filippo, and myself, uh, Luca. Uh, yes, definitely we are in the realm of uh, XL, not only for bands, but as well for size of the satellite. And we are going to show you some uh, features uh, which uh, open the floor to many applications from these two big uh, satellite constellations. Wow. Bye. I think you should see the presentation. No. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. And I can and also see, see the slide. You see the slide as well. Okay. Yes. So we are going to speak uh, about uh, the two constellations. First of all, uh, and we uh, will put the emphasis on some features which open the floor to several applications. First of all, I leave the floor to Filippo for uh, the first pill of uh, Cosmos second generation. Thank you very much. So when it comes to target detection and feature characterization, resolution is uh, one of the main uh, capabilities that are required together with, of course, uh, the availability of a good uh, image in terms of uh, noise level. And as was said before by our colleagues, uh, Axel, resolution is uh, important, but uh, is, there is also more to it. And here we put an example of a Spotlight 2A image, so a really very high resolution image, showing a particular feature close to an electric pylon. So here you can clearly see those dark lines that represent the, the uh, SAR shadows of electric wires. So what we are seeing here is a shadow caused by a really small tiny object that can be detected both thanks to the resolution and the really low level of noise that is available on Cosmos second generation images. Okay, let's go back to SAOCOM and let's speak about the ground motion everywhere, as you will see. Okay, let's uh, consider this area. This is an area in uh, a wet region, mountains, and a lot of vegetation is in southern China. Uh, the operational requirement is to monitor landslides uh, in not populated area. And uh, you need to measure uh, centimeter scale motion in all weather, all seasons. Uh, with Cosmo X band, you don't get that much from the phase information because the wavelength is too short, and uh, most of the backscattering you get is from the top of the trees. While L band with 23 centimeter wavelength can penetrate easily the canopy of the trees and uh, hit uh, some more stable uh, targets like uh, trunk or uh, terrain. The result is what you see on the right is a coherence map, which means a sort of quality factor, how much the phase of the first image is correlated to the phase of the second one. And you see the value at the peak close to one. This is a very good news and means that you can use the phase, you can exploit the phase to measure ground motion. Uh, after proper correction of topographic phase, you get these fringes uh, of, uh, from the SAOCOM pair of images. And uh, uh, what you can get with SAOCOM is a sensitivity of a few centimeters. 
I remind you that one phase difference cycle is uh, half of the wavelength. So the sensitivity to motion is a little bit less than X band. But the most important thing is that you can get information about ground motion on all kinds of terrain like this one. Uh, I leave now the floor again to Filippo to go back on Cosmos Chimed second generation. So polarimetry is the uh, new, the second new capabilities, the bigger new uh, capability available in the second generation of uh, Cosmos SkyMed uh, constellation. And as was anticipated during the uh, briefing before, there is a, there are all the um, acquisition mode of Cosmos second generation. They are uh, dual pole, so it is possible to collect images with a single polarization or with two different polarization. And also a quad pole acquisition mode is available. And here on the right side, there is a, uh, an image uh, coming, an RGB image coming from uh, a Cosmos second generation quad pole. And uh, the different colors tells about the different best scattering mechanism that is perceived by comparing the different polarimetric layers available in the data. And uh, of course, this opened the way also to new approaches concerning also the uh, change detection and multi-temporal analysis, because now we can characterize also the temporal signature of SAR according to the polarimetric feature. And so we can have uh, similar features having a different polarimetric multi-temporal signature. And this is a new capability that opened to new uh, applications and of course can enhance the analysis already carried out uh, like on agricultural areas or forested areas uh, with uh, these uh, uh, new uh, type of products. And of course we can also exploit this, uh, this feature also when we go down with resolution and we uh, are focused on the characterization of a specific target and features and here there is an example showing how through uh, very high resolution dual pole products, it is possible to distinguish also terrain soils according to their micro scattering mechanism. So here we have a vertical polarized uh, image, while this is the uh, cross polarized image. So this is a vertical uh, and horizontal image, VH image, where uh, uh, surfaces that are not perfectly flat are better represented. And of course, this is available with a single acquisition, a single dual pole acquisition. So we can better perform this kind of analysis and couple them, of course, with the uh, similar, uh, with a different approach focused on the same uh, uh, detection based on multi-temporal analysis. So here we are distinguishing terrains according to their time persistence. And we can couple this now also with the polarimetric uh, capabilities. Okay, let's get back to SAOCOM and let's speak about terrain and the penetrating terrains. Uh, okay, when uh, uh, the signal uh, goes, hit the soils, uh, the longer is the wavelength, the higher is the ground penetration. This opened the floor to several applications from SAUCOM, especially in measuring the soil moisture content of terrain. Uh, actually, uh, the SAUCOM constellation was specially conceived for uh, making this, me this measurement over the large agricultural areas of uh, Argentinian Pampa. So uh, you get a signal from the soil, from a certain depth of the soil, you measure uh, dielectric constant and this variation, and this is very important to assess the water content of terrain or to make other possible application, like, for example, mineral exploration could be possible as well. Uh, another application which is based on soil moisture content is the search for water leaks. Uh, here you see a map of uh, anomalies in uh, wo soil water content, uh, next one. We uh, overlap with uh, a water uh, distribution uh, network. And uh, what we get at the end is that L-band is capable, next slide, please, is capable to detect 
uh, hidden water leaks you cannot get from surface even in harsh environment like this case uh, of a road surface in a urban environment okay now i'll leave the floor to federica which is going to summarize what you can do with both constellations together. Okay, thank you. The real uh, that value is the joint operability between uh, Cosmos SkyMed and uh, SAUCOM. The um, orbital configuration is composed uh, by Cosmos SkyMed, Cosmos SkyMed second generation and SAUCOM uh, that are uh, in almost uh, the same orbital plane with this kind of uh, in interferometric revisit and 16 uh, days uh, orbital cycle. Uh, here, uh, um, an example of a joint acquisition. One uh, SAUCOM uh, passes uh, after uh, one Cosmos SkyMed with uh, a time interval of uh, 12 minutes and uh, almost the same incidence angle. Here an example of uh, joint analysis um, using uh, um, added value products, in this case uh, to MTC. Uh, as uh, you can see, um, the X band uh, shows uh, uh, all vegetated areas and uh, the L band highlights only the dense vegetated areas. Um, here some hints about uh, constellation synergies. In case of terrain analysis uh, uh, with uh, different uh, layers, the combination uh, um, between X and L band permits to uh, retrieve information about uh, each layer, uh, um, like a sort of tomographic information. Uh, a joint ground motion analysis on vegetated areas uh, combines uh, the high sensitivity of uh, X band on few points with uh, the wide uh, spatial analysis of L band uh, even on vegetated areas. Now, seven satellites are uh, um, already in orbit, and the uh, whole constellation will be operative by next year. And the main advantages are the frequent revisit and uh, the possibility of tip and queue applications. Thank you. Okay, that's all from us. I leave the floor to Luciana. Thank you. Uh, it does really look like com the combination of X-Band and L-Band makes it an Excel a very big and grand mission together. And it sounds really wonderful. Now to tell us about uh, more about the data and how we can acquire it, uh, we would like to invite uh, Luciana Di Domenico, the head of USA and Far East Market Cosmos SkyMed Sales at EGOS to tell us more. So Luciana is a seasoned sale man sales manager, <coughs> pardon me, with over 20 years of experience in sales of SAR data, starting way back <coughs> with ERS and NVSAT missions, and now more focused on the commercial sales of Cosmo Constellation data to customers in North America and Far East. Okay, so Luciana, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Hi, my name is Luciana, Luciana Di Domenico, and, uh, and Orla, thank you for introducing me. Thank you for taking the time. I work in the Cosmo sales team, which also overlooks uh, the DNI market at, uh, at EGOS. Uh, time is tight, so let's uh, dive right in. So after all this science and technology, which I believe I'm sure has been both of interest and useful, let's talk about how to access the data and our EGOS role from a commercial standpoint. So with what pertains Cosmos SkyMed and the broader Cosmo family, let's say, so Cosmos SkyMed Constellation and Cosmos Second Generation, we hold global exclu exclusive distribution rights from our shareholder and uh, satellite co-owner Italian Space Agency. On the, this is for the uh, commercial component of the Cosmos SkyMed data. We also act as the interface and liaison with Italian authorities for access to higher level products and services which is done on an ad hoc basis. In, in, the, in the framework of our rights, we also have the right to set up ground stations 
for independent operations and improved time, uh, service timeline uh, for what pertains to local markets. And for the Italian audience out there today, I'm happy to confirm that on behalf of ASI, Cosmos Kaima data is available free of charge for institutional use for Italian users. A big part of our market, of course, are our partners, the, the market, the actual market, and we have different types. So we have the ground station partners, which I touched on earlier. We work with what we call strategic partners, who are companies that normally uh, require large volumes of data and also stringent uh, SLAs. Uh, timing and uh, service requirements. So we set up commitment phased agreements to serve these uh, partners. We also appoint resellers, granting them uh, certain rights over certain market areas or uh, market segments and also discount. Being part of the Italian, uh, the Telespazio family, they are our main shareholder. We also operate through their branches on a global basis and uh, belonging to the greater Leonardo family. In the US, we also work with Leonardo DRS. And of course, not to forget our large clients, our key accounts. Pricing. So in a complicated world with more and more data available, more satellites available, at least for Cosmo, we're trying to keep the pricing simple. So what we have done, we have uh, made the same prices for Cosmos SkyMed and second generation data the same. Likewise for the polarization option. So no matter what type of polarization is, uh, is chosen, the price will be the same. Products uh, of a medium and low level, a low resolution are also priced in the same way. And the same is applicable to our packages. Interferometric and monitoring packages have the same price. The humongous uh, archive that uh, Axel touched on a couple of times, uh, also the pricing for this data set has been uh, reduced dramatically. And all our products are available both as single scenes and packages. We have set up, because of the you know analytics is coming to the world more and more, and very much used as uh, Richard Chagallis was uh, mentioning earlier at the start of the webinar, we have specific pricing also for this type of use of this type of application. And last but not least, we have maintained the uh, same prices for programming, delivery, and cancellation services. This is what the, the prices looks at looks like when you go onto our webpage, and you will find full details on prices. In a technology-driven world, we are technology uh, um, inundated. Uh, I believe that people can still make the difference. We have our team at your service. For what concerns the sales staff, so the team that I work with, we we are dedicated sales staff for large clients for working on big opportunities, significant projects. And part of the sales team, together with myself, there are Roberto Gigotti, Maria Angelucci, Carlo Morucci, Enrico Secha, and myself again, Luciana Di Domenico. In addition to, let's say, the, the, the more uh, tailored sales, the larger sales, our customer service team of senior and multilingual reps are available for list price orders and data inquiries. And going back to technology, of course, through our web, our cloud-based uh, platform, Cleos, which Domenico will be, Domenico Grandoni will be talking about in a few minutes, online ordering of the data will soon be possible. Before I leave the floor again to my colleague, Adrian Unger at, uh, from Bang, I would like to spend a few words on the, uh, on the relationship that EGOS has for Saucom, thanks to Bang. Uh, Bang and, Sao and the EGOS have set up a cooperation agreement for the distribution and the marketing of this new data set, the Albansar data set available from EGOS, which allows us to appoint distributors and market the products on a global basis. The global distribution rights entitle us for both uh, Salcom 1A and 1B data, so both satellites. Our imaging territory in terms of where we can acquire, what we can uh, provide geographic-wise, is uh, the whole world apart for Europe for the time being. And last but not least, our sales territory. Again, it's global thanks to our relationship with Bank, and in some areas we have selected um, exclusivity rights. And now I leave the floor to my colleague, Adrian Unger. Thanks, Luciana. So the time is tight. So I will not describe the, the price list in detail, but here we can see a classical price list with the stream map, top SAR modes, polarizations, 
which is the price for archive images, new acquisitions, and some discounts for main pass, side looking, and also same pass images. So you may see the conditions too, but you may check also the full document in the link in the bottom. Next slide, please. And now for INSAR packages and monitoring packages, we also have some some strong discounts in in both both configurations. And we also listed the conditions that you also may check in the the bottom link. That's all for SAOCOM. Thanks, Luciana. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your time and joining our webinar. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get to meet you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. That was great. And uh, I hope one day archive data will be available for free for other researchers who are not in Italy. That's just my hope. Our last speaker is Domenico Grandioni, head of the Big Data Analytics and Artificial Intelligence Solutions Competence Center at EGEOS who will tell us about their Kleos digital platform. Sorry. Apologies. <laughs> Domenico received a master's degree in environmental engineering at La Spazio University of Rome in 2008. He was hired in Telespazio's Earth Observation Division, later EGEOS, with the task of developing new geo-information services and applications. He currently holds the position of Head of Big Data, Analytics and AI at Competence Centre and is responsible for developing new big data analytics products from space and of Cloud Earth Observation Services, EGEOS digital platform for the online provision of geo information services. Domenico, the floor is yours. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Orla. Thanks, Kupika, for the introduction. It's really a honor and a pleasure to be here to share with you where we stand with the development and operationalization of CLIOS, that's Cloud Earth Observation Services, because it's true that uh, big size matters. It's true that we can do a lot of things uh, with Cosmos Climate, uh, Cosmos Climate Second Generation and Salcom, and it's true as well that we need uh, modern and streamlined ways to access archive and tasking data. And this is where Cleos comes. So let's see how Cleos works. Cleos is our online platform for access to the whole offering of EGEOS, including, of course, satellite imagery and uh, the new big brothers, Cosmos Second Generation and Salcom. It is very important that we are offering a brand new user experience to our customers where we are making available a lot of self-service options and tools for searching and more important, ordering both archive and tasking data in a multi-mission fashion. So it's very important that ourselves and our customers can browse catalogs, can see full details of the data, and they can proceed with a self-service process to order the data. So as you can see, it's like marketplace where we are all used to, but it is dedicated to satellite imagery and geospatial data. This is a revolution for us and it's bringing EGEOS in the realm of the platform economy. So today we are seeing a user interface so the team at EGEOS working on Cleos is really working hard and in a passionate way to constantly improve the interfaces we are offering to our customers. And soon we will be releasing a public API for machine to machine interactions and even more automation and streamline in operations. It is true that in Cleos you can access satellite imagery, but as we will see, in a moment, we are also able to access processing services. And this is very important because we are simplifying life and we are simplifying the way through which our customers can get also access to higher level products by using our own technology and cloud scalability to the processing at scale 
and receive uh, actually what we call, uh, well, what the world calls uh, analysis ready data. We are working a lot on that because we have the tools to do this processing at scale and we want our customers to be able to take benefit and advantage of our technology and of cloud scalability to get direct access to analysis ready data. Here we are seeing an example of multi-temporal coherence and clear we can offer also direct access to stacks of SAR detected amplitude and interferometric coherence. This is very important because uh, as we all see, SAR is becoming more and more a matter for non-SAR specialists. And we want uh, these uh, people to be enabled to get directly the data that they need to ingest into their machine learning, deep learning algorithms without taking care of all, uh, let's say the pain in preparing their data and this data, but putting their ingenuity and time in analyzing data and extracting value from analytics. This is why with Cleos we are taking the big part of the job and we are putting at the disposal of our customers our big data machine. Soon we will be also opening the developer portal where customers can come, bring their own algorithms and take full advantage of our platform as a service capabilities to build their own services and applications and deploy them in the cloud. This is actually at the center and at the earth of the platform economy. And this is where we see that the developments of future exploitation of satellite imagery, but not only, also including other geospatial data from drones, from in situ sensors and from the Federation of Assets is heading to. And we are here ready for the future. Thanks a lot, everybody, for, uh, for this opportunity to, to share with you where we are standing with Cleos, Cloud Earth Observation Services, which is live at cleos.earth. Thank you, Domenico, for telling us all about the Cleos platform, and I'll be sure to check out the website. Thank you. <laughs> wow, Ola, what an information-packed webinar this was. I learned so much about the capabilities of the two missions and about the data. Uh, yeah, and let's also not forget about the two missions coming together to become XL, uh, an extra large mission. I'm also excited about getting my hands on some of that data as I start my SAR journey. <laughs> Definitely. Well, on behalf of the Sisters of SAR team, we thank the speakers, audience and the organizers for this eventful webinar. Yes, and we would like to thank EGEOS again for this opportunity. And now we're just going to hand over to Paolo Minshaki, EGEOS CEO, for a short goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Dear participant, distinguished guests, I hope that you have found interesting our presentation on our capabilities in the radar domain. For sure, the joint constellation composed by Cosmos SkyMed, first and second generation and SAOCOM will offer a world of new possibilities in terms of application and, and the optimization of data fusion. Our team, the Geos team, is here and is ready to support you for any further information you will need. And we are ready for the next things. Please take care and stay safe.